Hi, welcome back to Zifari, the zombie novel. Um, in this little bit of the video book today, we're just going to finish up chapter four, and then next time we'll take a bigger ch bigger bite out of out of the subject matter. But uh, if you're ready, here we go. Just a sec. Here we are. When BB woke up the next day, there was a note on his pillow, a lipstick print of Elizabeth's lips. Meet me at nine at Dutfeld's, signed Love, Elizabeth, with a little heart dotting the eye. After his session the next day with Dr. McDougall, B.B. hurried back to the barracks and spruced himself up for the night ahead. The second night was just as perfect as the first, but the two didn't waste time dancing and closing down the bar. When they finished, B.B. explained to Elizabeth that he was going back on duty on platform 119th Street South the next day, but that when he had time off, he would look for her at Dutfield's. She kissed him, then she walked out the door. It was only about 10.30, and B.B. knew that he had to make sure to be on time at the platform the next morning. He walked back to the barracks. A corporal on duty in the front was on, a corporal was on duty at the front desk. B.B. explained his problem, and the corporal told him that he could get a Hummer to take B.B. back to Mrs. McGee's in about an hour. B.B. asked to use the corporal's phone and called up Mrs. McGee. She was glad to hear from him and that he would be back that night. B.B. hung up and ran back to his room to pack his things. He made it back to the corporal's desk about five minutes before his ride arrived. After the final session with Beebe, Dr. McDougall was confronted by the realization that some of his experimentation could be skipped. He would probably proceed directly to phase two, tactile contact. Contact arm to arms for one day and then excoriation to the thorax. Then he could move on to phase three. The sooner that he could move up the experimentation, the sooner he could solve the mystery of zombification. McDougall left the office and went down to the lab to take the next experimental step. Since Willie had to be restrained in the chair, he was receiving nourishment intravenously, and elimination was accomplished through the use of a urinary catheter and a colon catheter. The previous 24 hours had seen the zombie placed within a foot of Willie. Now it was time for tactile contact without excor excoriation. Dr. McDougall moved Willie's chair so that the arms of both chairs were touching, the zombie's left to Willie's right. The doctor called for his assistance. Two burly troopers came into the lab, and one loosened the straps, holding Willie's right arm. The other forced Willie's right arm over so that lay on top of the zombie's left arm, skin to skin. This got the zombie's attention. It roared and struggled against its straps, straining to reach Willie. Willie screamed and attempted to break free of the bonds and escape. Neither the zombie nor Willie succeeded. The undated Undead and the living were bound together here in this lab, corrupting science in a monstrous search for the undiscovered connection between the two. When the zombie and Willie were securely strapped together, Dr. McDougall wished them good night and sweet dreams, turned off the lights in the lab, locked up and went home to a dinner of meatloaf, roasted Brussels sprouts, and pineapple upside-down cake. Maybe he would show Mrs. McDougall the strange ads on his Facebook page. He whistled a song to no one, not even he could identify. Dr. Emily Earhart had finished reviewing the 200-some application files and had found 10 troopers that she felt had the requisite skills and experience to man the platforms. These 10 would provide relief for the regular troopers on their days off, sick days, personal days, and vacation days. Her troop was finally fully staffed again, and that wouldn't last long, she knew.